All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're bringing you this video all the way from Canada. We're here on TradingView.com bringing you a top-down analysis. Not even a top-down analysis, I should say. It's going to be just a, a little video talking about fresh zones above and below current price or anything that we should talk about. So let's sit back, tight, enjoy, and we're going to go through everything. Just drawing them out. Nothing too crazy. And uh, any recommendations? I'm going to bust one out on Friday for you guys. So any recommendations, any top downs, you know, we'll we'll get that done. All right, let's get this thing going, though. Let's start with Euro USD. All right, let's see, let's see. Fresh supply, I would go up here. This has been tested, has it not? We've been watching this supply for the past couple of past couple week and a half weeks so that one's in play it's, it's uh, been working quite well we got one of those trades up in there and then the next fresh demand is right down here but if you really want to uh, this would be the daily demand but if you really want to find where the orders are sitting there's a good stack down here we'll go down to the four hour and this is where a really good zone is sitting right there at the extreme so definitely if price did come down into that area I would definitely like to be a buyer down there all right well i'd rather be on the buy side with it down in that area especially with the size of the zone i think that's where the majority of the orders are sitting but let's keep going we're looking for fresh ones only all right pound usd daily chart we have that drop base drop supply zone definitely a big a big amount of uh, definitely some sellers sitting in this area but what I do keep a note of is that we are sitting in monthly demand. Actually, yeah, we're sitting in monthly demand right here. Tested not once, just once, twice, coming in really deep. So we're near the very extreme. So there's going to be a lot of buyers down here at the extreme, support and resistance traders. But uh, this is the level that we talked about that was holding price. Still is holding price, I believe. Yes. So that's the profit margin. You have supply right right up there. Demand. Actually, I would kind of like it to be drawn like that. And then like that. So we're sitting in that daily demand at the very extreme, but we're having this profit margin cut. Not very good profit margin. We have supply right there, demand right there, and it's never a good idea when you get prices doing this right before your zone. All right, so it's got some battling to do, but uh, definitely an area that could work out long term. Let's keep going. Aussie USD. I don't like it at all. Uh, we've broken this downward aggressive trend line. I would draw it out like something like that. So that would mean that we have demand down here and some supply up there. But uh, I'm just not interested in trading this right now. Uh, maybe if I wanted to, I would maybe look at scalping on the four hour. And if I was scalping. Maybe like this level, it's not even that great. And then for demand, I'm not even a fan of that. But so let's just try to keep it on the daily. We can see that momentum clearly has broken. So there's buyers are stepping in. So even selling here is not really a good idea. But let's keep going. Not a big fan of that Aussie USD right now. Same thing with here. We have three drop base drops in a row. It's just very overextended. Our, this is the supply I like. And then overall up here at the extreme, I don't like drawing this big zone. So let's see if there's anything on the four hour. You're going to get some dropping right there, but this really isn't a, a pair that I'm eyeing right now. Not until we break this low, at least. It's, it, there's a lot of trade. There's, you know, there's a lot of pairs that have just been dying out over the last couple weeks. We're sitting in the dog days of summer. You know, only even baseball. It's baseball is the only sport that's on. You know, going into the dog days. Got football around the corner. Any football fans out there? Got hockey fans coming around the corner soon. Next thing you know, we're in baseball playoff mode. Yeah, USD yen. We're so oh, mad. I don't like it. I do not like it. Let's skip it. I talked about this in my last video. Talking about the USD yen. There's no quality total up here in these levels. And then demand. I just don't see it. Uh, you're going to have some demand down here, I feel, just because based off of we've broken this momentum down. 
but you haven't removed this. It's just an ugly one right now. Not interested in trading it. USD Swiss, if we were to identify the fresh zone, boom, right here. And then boom, right there. Now, if you go down to the 4-hour, you'll probably see the same thing. That level right there is at the very extreme of that supply zone. So that's a nice little zone. As for demand, let's identify it. Let's see. So here we are down here. Aha. We have this rally base rally demand zone right there. And a drop base rally right there. Let's see. Is it a weekly zone too? Yeah, it's that weekly zone we've been talking about. Weekly demand. Got those two levels. We can see how that daily. Oof, maybe it just touched it and it came up. There's definitely a lot of buy orders sitting in these zones. So, I'm not interested in selling up in that level at all. I don't think it's good at all. I don't like it. Um, it's been tested twice now, and I'm just not a big fan of it, really. But let's keep going. Uh, USD CAD. We have that supply up there. Then ultimately the new supply is up there. Demand. We talked about how... I'm not supposed to be talking about levels that have already played out. But we had that demand zone working out for us. And then we don't have demand till down here. I don't like anything in here. Not a fan, maybe on smaller time frames, maybe, but really not a fan of anything like that. You might have broken actually a momentum line. Let me see. Oh, it's five o'clock somewhere. No, not yet. So let's keep going. Let's check out gold. Gold, boom. Instantly, my eyes go down to these demand zones, big rally in prices. That's how you guys should be doing it, not be looking for these basing candles. Look for these big leg outs. Remember the four patterns we look for. For demand, rally base rally and a drop base rally. And for supply, a rally base drop and a drop base drop. All right. Uh, let's keep going. Where is that supply? Oof, yeah, see, every supply that we've talked about has basically just gotten banged out, smoked. We had that supply. Let's check about it. Let's check on it and see if anything interesting happened with it. So we don't have fresh supply till up there, at least. Nice drop. So we're coming up near to that area, too. Let me reverse that. So that was one of the supply zones we talked about. Uh, never a good idea with prices basing right before it, like we talk about. But it did work for a little bit, but maybe really, maybe just a little pullback, but it really didn't have anything too amazing. Silver! Oof. Nice. I really had a big move out. Really been breaking. Silver's been breaking up. Have that supply there it's been blown through. I really don't think we have supply till up up here. Let's check the weekly chart too, just to see what the weekly tells us. Yeah, so that's where weekly supply is. Been tested as for weekly demand. Right down in here. 16 16 3 area. Same thing on the daily. I still like this area. Down in that area. Still just in that uptrend, though. Trying to buy every pullback we can. U.S. oil. All right. To find fresh supply, I'm going to have to go up and to the left, right? Fresh means it has not been tested. We talked about that in that last tips video. That was a good one, talking about tested versus, te tested versus fresh. Uh, we had that supply zone. That one got blown through. We talked about it. Uh, this one has been broken just barely, just barely, so we're not going to talk about it. Uh, you're sitting in this rally base rally right now, and you probably have some demand on that 4-hour. Yeah, down here. It's not a bad area to look for buys, but definitely up there is something I like. 
Uh, Dow Jones. Let's just do one of these. Let's pick the SPX, S&P. We'll go to the US 500. All right, I'm back now. I just screwed up the recording, so I have to do this part over again. Woo! That's fantastic. We're going to be doing here, we're going to be talking about the uh, SPX 500. Uh, so let's talk about it. Where is fresh demand? Fresh demand is not till down here. We have supply reacting right now. And that's tested. We really don't have fresh. Any, everything's tested right now. So let's keep going. Where are we? Let's go to Bitcoin. Bitcoin's sitting in that range right now. You can see this demand zone still holding up price. As for supply, you're going to have some selling there, but I'm not a big fan of it. Let's just keep going on. Uh, US dollar. Let's try to find those fresh supply. We know that price was reacting in a, in a supply here, so we've got to go higher up. Let's check out the weekly time frame. So here was that supply we talked about, and we talked about how there was like daily supply right in this area at the t extreme. So that's clearly been getting shut down by it. But if you want to find fresh weekly supply, you've got to go up here. That's the next zone. As for demand, we're going to have to pick some up down here. All right. But, you know, day trades are awesome. I always look at these markets. Let's check out the euro. Same thing on the euro. Looking at the daily time frame. We have that daily demand, daily supply currently being played out. And we don't have fresh supply till up here. And I bet if we go down to the 4 hour, we're going to find some demand right there. Boom. Same correlation play, right? As the Euro USD. Oh, it's 5 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> uh, British Pound. Talk about that. Same, you know, looking at these future markets, we're seeing the same thing on these other currencies matched up with the US dollar. The major, so we have that supply sitting there, and then we have that demand over here. But I know that it's not a nice demand on this. Futures chart looks a bit different, but we're sitting here at the extreme, so that's why we're getting buyers stepping in here. It's it's you know if it breaks, it's breaking monthly demand, so that's gonna be pretty tough to do. So you've got to at least think that some buying is gonna come in here at least. But it's never a good sign when prices is, is basing like this. So prices might just pop up and then shoot down. But if we could remove the supply, it would be a really nice long, ugh, long opportunity. All right. Let's keep going. Looks like we got some supply right there battling it out. And then demand. You don't have daily demand till down here, but I can probably see... A nice little four hour demand in there. Yeah, look at that. Based on how that wick was. Big move out. Boom. Boom. As for this four hour, boom, right here. Those are two zones that I like. Definitely seeing weakness up here, but look, oh, keep an eye on this basing. You never want this candle to start basing, then shoot up. Let's check out the Aussie. Oh, no, yeah, we talked about this. Not a fan. It's just been going sideways on the four hour. Boom, just like that. So clearly this downtrend has ended. People have taken their profits. Now it's going sideways. New Zealand US dollar. Uh, this is the weekly time frame. So weekly time frame supply not till up there. And weekly demand is here, but it's been tested. We really don't have fresh. Let's see if we can go down a time frame. Let me do this. Oh, it's five o'clock somewhere. So we're reacting off of that demand right there. If you want to really be picky, that's how it would be. But next demand down in these areas. Alright, as for supply, I don't see anything till up here. 
I'm really not a big fan of this. I, just based on the daily, but if you go down to the four, it all depends on what your analysis is, right? Maybe you're like you're scalping, so you want to see what the four hour because on the four hour this is a beautiful zone, but you're be trying to do maybe more higher time, not even higher time frame trades, but if you're looking for just maybe like that extra time frame up, well then that daily zone is probably not the best. But if you're trying to find scalps, then it is pretty good. Uh, Swiss, we're currently reacting off of that supply zone. And then we have that demand down here. Let's see if there's an opportunity in there. Okay, see, see we're sitting in that. Maybe up here might be a good little weakness in the Swiss market sometime this week. We'll keep an eye on that. But as for the Swiss, the next fresh zone, I'm really excited for these levels when price eventually gets up here it will it's just a matter of time so we have this rally base drop base drop a level on top a level beautiful levels and I think it's a weekly zone too obviously yeah very nice weekly zone so we can manage to get up there I like that area for a weakness Canadian all right, all right, all right, all right. I like that. It's sitting in that daily supply zone. That's how we saw that USD CAD start shooting up. That was a correlation play that I've previously talked about. I talked about it in the last video. Um, so that would be the zones. As for fresh supply, let's go up here. I'm not calling this fresh yet. This is reaction to this supply zone. It's very simple. Maybe if we break this level right here, then I'll be going and saying this is supply. But as of now, no. Euro pound sitting in that daily demand zone. Looks like we got demand again right here. <laughs> Oof. I don't even know who's still listening to this curious because I just go on for this long amount of time and I'm curious is anybody still listening if you are just say in the comments I'm still listening man I don't know I've scrolled too far back there's no real supply back there so oh no this is euro pound what the hell I got sidetracked we talked about this so I'm surprised I'm not talking about it more we had that big weekly supply you guys remember Ooh, how excited I was about this supply zone. I thought it was an amazing level, and it is an amazing level. We might be actually get, seeing a stop on where it just pops above it and goes down, but based on the daily, we're just going up, coming back down into daily demand, so I don't necessarily play those stop loss, loss hunts. But we're coming back up into daily, uh, daily ugh, back down into daily demand, so definitely a buying opportunity and buying down here. Might want to keep an eye on those futures, right? So we might be getting turning points with that pound. Then again, the Brexit's around the corner, so and that Brexit's probably going to get shit on. Uh, Euro Aussie. Fresh demand is... Fresh demand is not till here, but this is just going sideways. See, if I was scalping this, I would like this supply zone. We're in that downtrend. Price is coming back up into that supply, so I want to be shortened. So let's keep going. We're almost done. We're almost done. Ooh, Aussie, New Zealand. Fresh zones. We talked about... Oh, I can't believe I missed that trade, too. Well, I would have lost because I was identifying this zone right here. And based on where I would have, I was just going to set and forget this zone too. But based on where my stop was going to be, it was literally going to stop me out by a pip and a half. So I got lucky on that. But maybe it just moved so fast that it wouldn't have gotten me out. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I don't see any supply in here. This price is just continuing to go up, reacting off of this demand right now. 
let's see it on the four hour. Yeah, going back down into that four hour demand zone. So definitely getting that strength move up. Pound yen. Pound yen sitting in that supply. Sitting in supply right now. I would draw it out like that. Drop base drop. Price came back up into that daily supply zone. You know, we could have this. It's, I'm just using the daily time frame just because I like to use the daily time frame. But, you know, we could be doing this exact same thing on the one minute chart. If we did the one minute chart, where the hell is price? And here we are, I would say. You guys wouldn't know. If we didn't have this one minute chart here, you guys would have no idea this is a one minute chart. But we would say, boom, here's supply. In order to find supply, we got to go up and to the left. Here is the next fresh supply. And fresh demand, we got to go down and to the left. This has been tested. It would be like that. Currently being played out right now. So for fresh demand, you got to keep going lower. Is this tested? Yes. Is this tested? Yes. So we got to keep going lower. Is this tested? Yes. Is this tested? Basically, yes. This is a test into this zone. The next fresh zones you really don't have is till down here, and that's not even that great. I would say down here. I'm doing the exact same thing as what you guys see me doing in here, but on the daily time frame. So let's go to the next one. In order to find fresh supply, we've got to go up and to the left. Do I like this zone? Mm, not a fan of it. Not a fan of it. If I am, I really want to see... I, I like to see... There's probably a nice four-hour zone right there. And I don't like it based on the daily just because it's, it's not very strong. Uh, it's a bit wicky. But, yeah, see? Like I said, we go to the four-hour, we're going to see a zone. Now, that's a completely different trade. Now, if I'm taking this based on the four-hour time frame, it's a completely different trade. Than if I'd be using it on the daily. Because on the daily I would not even want to trade that. But you know maybe if I'm scalping. Maybe I'm just looking for that quick little bounce. So two completely different ways of trading. It's just important to understand. Which type of trading. Or which type of trade that you're taking. Euro yen. I don't see anything till up here. I don't like this. There's no quality in here. Nothing down here. I would just stay away from it till up here. And then as for demand. Ooh, it's going to make me go all the way back. As for demand, you're going to have that, and uh, you're going to have that. Like I'm, I'm keeping these zones because it, it's a nice zone on the weekly time frame, if I believe. Oh, it's 5 o'clock on Saturday. So, yeah, if we look on a weekly time frame, Clearly, this is the zone. Nice drop base rally, big move out, removed all the supply. So it's like, damn, it's probably a nice uh, demand zone. And there is levels embedded in it, but now just keep an eye on this basing. If we start basing, if we close this week like this, I'd be a little scared. Not scared. Maybe just nervous. Be. It's not something I want to see prices basing like this before it. But last one, let's keep going. Aussie Yen. Weekly, oh, this is the weekly. How long have we been doing the weekly time frame? <laughs> uh, so this is the weekly supply that I like. As for weekly demand, we cannot be using... There's nothing here on the weekly. we got to go all the way down. I don't see anything till down here, and that's probably a monthly time frame. Aha, uh -huh, so I see this demand. This is a nice demand zone that's worked a lot. See, it's a nice little rally base. You could draw it like that, you wouldn't be wrong. Rally base rally, it's kind of hidden. Tested once, basically tested twice, three times, four times five times depending on how you would draw it right and <clears throat> now we're getting that push down again like shit and it's been holding price every time and it just touches it and goes up so clearly someone's buying in that area you're gonna have support and resistance traders trading this with you too just big picture if we actually scroll all the way out 
Like clearly you have support and resistance traders. But you know, somebody asked me what's the difference between support and resistance, supply and demand. And the real difference, we have the same concept. I talked about this with Etienne and uh, so you know we, we all have the same analysis basically about where we want to be buying and selling we're basically buying and selling in supply zones that are basically support and resistance zones but what diff what's different about us is the more times it touches the zone is for us the more times it touches it supply and demand traders the less likely it's going to work again because if you think about it you're taking an axe to a tree every time you swing an axe to a tree it's just going to get weaker and weaker but as for support and resistance traders, the more times it touches it, the more it gets respected. So it's pretty odd about how that works. Pretty weird. But we uh, agree on buying and selling in the same areas, but buy low, sell high kind of mentality. But we different. We are different when it comes to that. So it's just an interesting area. If you just had to like look at this, be like, well, it's probably not a good idea to be selling right now. Just given the history since 2008, 2009, every time it's came into the zone, it's touched it and just skyrocketed up, and every short has been failed. So if I would, if I would be short, and I wouldn't feel comfortable shorting until up here and up here. It's just something I'd be aware of, right? See, I talked about it on the. I didn't even know that we were sitting in that demand, but I said it. I said I don't see anything on the weekly or daily until we hit up there. I still don't see anything till up here. So like that's where you know that's where we're gonna see that move out. Let's see if we can actually see price turning. Technically, this would be the first indication of prices starting to turn by removing the supply, breaking that momentum line down. So there was clearly buyers in this area. I think somebody mentioned it to me. I know I know somebody mentioned it to me, and now they were talking about like somewhere up in here. I know it. I know who it is, and I'll be talking to them about it. I talked to them. We we're talking about this zone here, and I said I don't like it. Told I said I don't like the structure of this zone, but if I did want to be taking it, I would want to be buying it near the extreme on a smaller time frame. So if we go to the one hour, where are we? Nah, I don't even like it on the one hour. I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. I don't even like the zone. I don't like this. Uh, it's been tested. It worked out for a little bit, but didn't work out too much. But uh, no, I, I just wasn't a fan. I'm not going to sit here and say I was right. I was right. Nope, because I wasn't. Uh, this would definitely be a nice demand zone. Like, oof, like if price was like this, though, like back here when price was like that, I, I really didn't like it just based on the structure. So that's why I would go down maybe into a smaller time frame. But I still didn't see anything great, so that's why I skipped it. Uh, but now. Like now with that move, like strong, big, you can see the difference. Look at this difference between this zone and this zone. You know, wiki, candles have to go farther down in order to find those demand zones. Um, it really didn't have that big of a move out before another move had to happen to make it go larger. This was just a big boom. Check this out, just a big move, and that's what we want to see. It's definitely a different. If you could say, like, you know, if I had to ask you which zone is stronger, this zone or this zone? You, know, you should probably be saying this zone right here. Big move out, took out more supply, actually broke this high too. It's just better quality. But I think that's it. That's it. Well, that's all. Well, I'm just going to shut the hell up now. Enjoy the rest of the trading day or even the whole day. I don't know. All right. We'll leave you with that. Cheers. Bye-bye.